All right, it's my pleasure to introduce our presenters today. We have Maddie Pauls, our senior consultant um, for Atlas, and um, with sorry, and Alex, um, founder of Wednesday, and Jim Barsh, president at Nextpax. Um, we're all here to share some great insight about how to drive last minute bookings this summer season. Can each of you please introduce yourself, share a little bit about your company? And let's start with you, Maddie. Sure. Hi, I'm Matthew Pauls with uh, Track and Travelnet Solutions. I work for the Atlas team. Uh, my sole focus is to help my clients drive more direct bookings. We do that through our e-commerce platform and full funnel marketing services. Great. And mm -hmm. how about you, Alex? Okay. Yeah. My name is Alex Alioto. Happy Monday, everyone. Uh, I am the co-founder of Wimstay. We are a channel and a very proud partner of Track. Um, and what we do is we help property managers fill their unsold nights last minute. So that's it. Great. Perfect. I like it. Thank you very Short much. Short and sweet. Yep. How about you, Jim? <laughs> I could be even shorter, typically. Yeah. So anyways, I'm Jim Barnes with NextPax. I've uh, been a great partner with Track for a while. Uh, love Alex and his group as well. Uh, basically, NextPax, we're a channel connector. So we're working with Track customers to connect to various travels, uh, or excuse me, travel channels around the globe. We want to give you that easy button and uh, really make sure you can tap into all opportunities to drive uh, business for your, for your property. Great. Thanks, Jim. Okay, just um, let's go over our agenda. Uh, management companies across the country are reporting that booking pace is down from last year. And we're here today to get some perspective around current industry trends contributing to slower booking pace. We're going to talk through some strategies for leveraging all the channels to drive summer bookings and share some insight on how to make it easier for last minute travelers to book with you. There are a number of factors impacting summer travel behavior, including ongoing travel uncertainty, an increase in rental supply inventory, shifting traveler behavior, and an increasingly diverse mix of how, where, and when travelers book accommodations. Alex, let's dig into booking pace a bit. What are this year's booking trends telling you? So um, thank you very much, Shelley. So mm -hmm. I, I would start with this, right? There's there's good news and bad news. I don't know, by the way, why I chose this photo. <laughs> I, I did the old good news, bad news search on, on uh, images on Google, and this came up, and I just like the rabbit's face, but I'm not even 100% sure what, what it has to do with good news and bad news. But at any rate, let's dive into it. So booking pace is down, right? I don't think that we need any type of focus right or booking.com survey to tell us that. Maybe <laughs> your owners are telling you that. I don't know. Uh, but it's, it's pretty poignant, and I think we're all seeing it. However... And I think that would be the bad news section. Here's a little bit of the good news. So according to, to World Travel and Tourism Council, global tourism levels are pegged to return to occupancy rates closer to 2021 than to 2019. So in other words, there's a bit of a, I would say there's a regression to the mean. There's no question about it, but that mean has been raised, if that makes any sense at all, right? So there's that. Also, according to US Travel Association, they see travel spending in April of 2022 was above 2019 for the first time, right? And thirdly, U.S. Travel Board shows that booking windows across all verticals have gone down. So this is happening, by the way, while spending is remaining the same or, or in some cases even increasing. So what does this tell us? Simple, right? People have not stopped traveling. People have not stopped spending money on traveling. It's just how they travel has changed a little bit. And I think that's what we're going to dive into today. And Jim's got some reasons why. Uh, and and uh, so I, I knock it over to Jim. Hey, thanks, Alex. Uh, yeah, again, I think that everybody pretty much knows travel is going on now. But the biggest thing is there's options. Uh, you know, a year ago right now, uh, there were almost no cruise ships out there. Airlines were flying still pretty empty. Uh, resorts, eh, not really there. I was staying down in Mexico and the areas that had six resorts uh, all but one of them was closed. They're all open now. So right now you've got a whole lot of opportunity that was not there last year. And if you look at some of the numbers, uh, just from an air traffic perspective, you know, the last couple of days we have either been at or above 2019 uh, 
uh, basically measured by a number of people that go through the TSA. And so we just barely broke a couple of days above 2019. So that tells you people are getting out, they're going more places. If we look just at the vacation rental industry, because I've seen some numbers that, you know, people are running as much as 20% down uh, in occupancy below last year. And uh, there's a good reason for it. There's more availability in the, in the uh, area as well as people choosing different destinations. If we look at just our customers, you know, I'll call the same store, they were honest last year, they were honest this year. On average, we've seen an 8% growth in number of properties. Uh, you know, not through the roof, not too bad. Uh, based on what numbers you look at in overall properties going into the vacation rental industry, that's between 6 and 7% up. So not a lot of difference between what our customers are seeing and also what is out there in general. And you're seeing a lot of different type of vacation rental in, uh, inventory going in. Uh, some full-time, some part-time, uh, a lot of people who've never managed properties now trying to do it. Uh, but bottom line, there are a lot more options out there for travel than what there was before and a lot more supply compared to the last couple of years. Great. Let's see. Yeah, so, yeah, so thanks for setting the stage there, Jim and Alex. Um, <clears throat> the, supp the supply can't be understated. Um, we've seen different markets that have added much more supply. Even Myrtle Beach, I read the other day, has added over 60% since the beginning of the pandemic. So now more than ever is the right time to look at your channel mix and make sure that you have a healthy balance. Our most successful clients are aiming for 65 to 75% of direct bookings. Um, notice I didn't say 100%. They're using that last quarter or so to fill in, uh, fill in gap nights, push prices, um, do last minute bookings, expand their audience. So now is the time to go ahead and take a look at your mix and also look at your, look at your channel mix specifically. What are the OTAs bringing you? Are you there for last minute guests like uh, with Wednesday? Are you looking to find a new younger generation with some of the other channels? Um, so take a look at your most profitable channels and double down on what's working and maybe try something new if, if things aren't working. Great, Maddie. Thank you. Let's do a poll here. Um, we're going to go ahead. I don't know if you guys can see the poll yet or not. But we are going to ask which of your channels currently drive the highest volume of last minute bookings. Is it direct booking websites, call center or phone reservations, OTA listings, or niche sites like Wednesday, DMO, or regional tours? sites. I'll give you a second to go ahead and take that poll. All right. Now that we've got, now that you guys have a lay of the land of what's going on and why, Let's talk through some strategies of how to fill those last minute bookings. Do the guest bookings last minute fit your average demographic? Are there adjustments you can make to your booking rules and policies to better accommodate these bookings? Or are you promoting the right properties on the right channels? And how can you make it easier for travel travelers to have confidence in their bookings? Alex, what can you tell us about the demographics for last minute bookers? Well, thank you, Shelly. So I want to actually focus on two generations in particular here, um, the Gen Z and the millennial generations. And I think the first question is ultimately why? Well, 151 million travelers in the United States are either considered millennial or Gen Z, and they are spending upwards of $350 billion on travel in 2022. So this is a massive a massive sort of uh, part of our of our industry, right? And who constitutes our travelers right now? So I generally don't like to read off of bullets, but I'm just going to read these two bullets because I think it's actually really important. So when taking that into consideration, right? 151 million travelers spending 350 billion dollars in travel every year. Approximately 49% of millennial travel is due to last minute vacation choices, and 69% of millennials surveyed regret not taking a last minute trip. And then approximately 51% of Gen Z travel is due to last minute vacation choices and 81% of millennials surveyed regret not taking a last minute trip, right? So that comes from Focusrite. 
Now you see that other little graph right below. It's pretty tough to read, and, and so I'm sorry about that. So you might have to take my word for it unless you have incredible eyesight, which I do not anymore, or glasses, which I do not. But um, uh, so this is from Deloitte. So millennials and Gen Z, I love this, you guys. Millennials and Gen Z surveyed overwhelmingly. They chose travel and seeing the world as their number one priority, okay? This is above monetary wealth. This is above starting a family. This is above owning a home. So these two generations that are coming, not only are they spending $350 billion in travel, right? Not only is last minute vacation choices what they want, but travel is their number one priority. So let's tie it all together, right? Over half the population, number one priority is travel and their preferred way of traveling in the United States is last minute. So this is massive. And then this is something, and I'm gonna kind of, this is gonna be a little bit of theme on some of the, uh, on some of the, the slides that I'm involved with, is our vertical in particular right? The, the vacation rental vertical. We cater to them like no other vertical and no other uh, form of lodging within, uh, within the travel world, right? And so as I kind of continue through this, I'm going to mention this again and again and again and again. Not only are these guys set up to want to travel, but these guys are set up to want to travel in vacation rentals specifically. So I think we're in a really, really good spot if we could take advantage of it. Great. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh. Me again. Yeah, I should have waited for you to swallow. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. Uh, and so, how are they traveling? Oh, how thank you, Shelly. Good job. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, so pets, right? So 53% of all travelers, they take holidays with their pets. 53%. So a pet-friendly accommodation basically at this point is, is kind of becoming a must. And 52% of those surveyed pet owners say that they only want to stay at a pet-friendly vacation. So... I mentioned that theme, right? This is another massive differentiator for our industry, right? Hotels, yes, I guess you can kind of bring a dog to a hotel, but really at the end of the day, you want to keep that thing locked up in a, that thing, that beautiful pet of yours, locked up in, uh, in a little room all day? No, the answer is no. So again, this is a massive part of, of our industry and this is one, this is a big time differentiator for us. Great, great. Now you get to go to the operational kind of stuff. I'm, I'm a tech guy, so I tend to focus on numbers and different things like that. It's a good mix, so I, Jim. Yeah, yeah, I'm mix. not going to be as uh, you know expressive as Alex. And yeah. <laughs> um, and hopefully you can see a few of these numbers. But even tying back to Matt, you know, what is the you know what are you seeing characteristics and what are the right channels based on where you're at? Um, looking at the poll, and, and this was a little surprise to me. Thirty three percent of you answered direct booking sites followed by your call center, but 57% was OTA listings is where the bookings are coming from right now. And, and that's really high. So I think when you're looking at, at where your channels are, they're very different characteristics and pick the ones that are gonna meet your destination, your time of year and what your goals and objectives are. But keep track of a few things which are pretty, uh, pretty interesting. And uh, I'm gonna focus first on length of stay. Uh, we see a lot, particularly in the summer, you know, we always do week to week, we always do seven nights stay, you know, Saturday, Saturday, or maybe it doesn't matter. But when you start looking at this, and this is across um, literally 100,000 bookings uh, that we took as a sample here in the US, 41% of our bookings are for three nights or less. You know, think about that. By you crank that up to four nights, it's 56%. And when you take a look at those which are below seven nights, it is 81%. Okay, so if you're trying to really focus on that seven night stay, it may work for you, particularly certain times of the year, Christmas, holidays, 4th of July, whatever it may be, but the rest of the year that can be very, very impactful. Um, a very specific example, one of our track customers, uh, they had about 700 properties, booking.com, uh, great beach destination over in the Gulf Coast. Uh, they had a seven night, stay requirement for the summer because that's what they've always done and they've always been successful. Uh, they were running pretty similar on their average pricing, but their, their occupancy rates were way down. Uh, they decided to change it. They dropped it to a four night LOS and we went from one or two bookings a day up to about 10 plus or minus per day with that one change. Wow. Overnight, okay. So huge impact. They didn't adjust their pricing. The only thing they changed was their minimum length of stay. Uh, so that to me is a, just a you know really big one that, that you need to look at. 
And then when you look at the channels and kind of what's there from the average length of stay, you can see that obviously Alex's brand is, is kind of geared towards the last minute. Um, you know, we have uh, Vacay My Way, which is down there a little bit lower. But when you look overall, the average length of stay we see is about, you know, four, four uh, days. Doesn't vary a lot with a lot of channels, some are longer. Um, but some of those channels like Home To Go, Holiday, they're way up there. We draw some domestic traffic. We saw it would draw some, uh, some international. The other thing I would say is look at what is your booking pace, because uh, that will also help you. You know, when do you need to be targeting these channels? What do you need to be doing based on each time of year? Now, if you can read that, you know, that graph that I have on booking pace, um, I, I can't, I'm, you know, my, it's, my eyes aren't as good either. It's a little blurry. But uh, you'll see the differences, the really close in and the further out. So really look at what you're trying to do. A lot of these channels are not going to deliver a lot of, you know, people to you tomorrow, the next day, the next day. But having a range of the channels out there and being able to price accordingly will make a big difference. So certain things to keep in touch there. And I think Shelly's got another uh, poll before I move into my next uh, passionate topic. Yeah, and actually this poll is going to be about the next passionate topic of gyms. So um, <laughs> the poll is how many fees do you have? That's what we're gonna talk about next um, as we're finding lots of, um, I don't know, booking, I guess, hesitation when there are a lot of fees involved. So um, let's see, how many fees do you have? Do you have none? Do you have one to three, four to six, or seven or more? Just give it a second. And then- you have that Jeopardy it. music going. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Perfect. So we will see the- um, results here, but on, as we're waiting for them, we can always let Jim kind of go ahead and chat it up about consolidating fees. Sounds good. So you'll see those big numbers off to the left. And, and this is where I'd love to be able to say, can anybody tell me what you know 3.2 is? Uh, this is how many fees the average property has on our platform. So again, we look across tens of thousands of units, the average is 3.2 fees. Oh, okay, sounds good. Doesn't sound good, whatever the case may be. But when you start to drive in and look at what consumer uh, behavior is and what their considerations are, uh, it can make a huge difference. So I'm going to pull on some research that's been done by some other, uh, you know, Verbo, Airbnb, Booking.com. Roughly two thirds of travelers have stated they won't book a property with more than two fees. Wow. Okay, that that's interesting. Uh, my, not my number, theirs. Half of travelers won't book if 15% of the trip is more than fees. So it's that time you book the trip, you know, it's $200 for the nightly rate and $300 or $150 for your fees. Um, and we heard that a lot, you know, people don't wanna do that. The next one uh, on the big numbers there is 95% uh, of the property managers have a cleaning fee on their properties. And then you look at it says that if properties have one fee, you know, and no more, they have a 48% higher conversion rate than those that have three fees. So to me, that, that's incredibly important when you look at that. Um, people expect a cleaning fee. I'm in a house, it has bedrooms. They gotta, you know, they gotta wash sheets. They gotta scrub things down. Cleaning fee isn't as big of a deal. But when you start getting in all of those other type of fees, and uh, you know the 60% number there, that's how many have some kind of a booking fee, a reservation fee, an administrative fee. And people have a, a negative reaction to that, particularly when they're on like a booking.com, excuse me, on Airbnb or Verbo, where there's also the guest service fee. So they look at, I see this fee, this fee, they're just charging me out the, you know, out the wazoo. Um, and when we look at the fees right now from our poll, 68% uh, of you answered they have one to three fees, 14% four to six and 5% at seven over and 14% had none. Okay. So uh, some interesting and good numbers there. If you take a look at those um, kind of shopping, um, you know, booking form things on there, we have one from Verbo, Airbnb and booking.com. Anymore when somebody is shopping, you're seeing typically the total price, not counting taxes. It already includes fees. And it's not until you drill into your pricing that you see those fees. So one of the recommendations we have is that one, don't charge as many fees, 
Try to work within your pricing overall if you can. And I know sometimes you can't based on your owner splits, how you do that, your contracts. But what you can look at doing is rolling some of those fees into your rental amount. Based on the research, my recommendation, and you can always test this, would say, you know, keep your cleaning fee separate and your other fees roll into your rental amount. You know, I track, track has that capability, I know. We have that on our system. We can vary it by channel. We can vary it by a lot of different things if you want to. Uh, but I would really look at that. The next one, and this, I, I should have a red flag warning on this. People hate refundable deposits. Absolutely hate it. And uh, get rid of it. Use a damage waiver or even better yet, go to a product like Super Hog or Safely, where not only can you get a verification of your guest, but then you can also get that protection for any damage which is done. It's automatic and you can crank that up into higher levels. Um, fan, funny anecdotal story here. I was running a house in Mexico. Um, I am a digital nomad and kind of go around and, and I avoided Alex that other term. <laughs> that other term. I am a digital nomad. But she wanted to charge me a you know $2,500 deposit for this house. And I'm just like, no, I don't want to do this. And we talked back and forth. I introduced her to Super Hog. She looked at it and she's like, I had no idea this even existed. So I got her signed up with Super Hog. And, and did my super hard thing. So I didn't have to pay that deposit and the refundable deposit. So anyways, that's a little bit on this. If you're gonna look at one area, particularly whether it's a close in or longer term, somebody's booking right now for next week or the weekend after, if you slam them with a whole bunch of fees, you're gonna have a negative reaction. So off my soapbox, very passionate about that. Great. No, I like that, Jim. And I just put in the chat, Superhog is running a deal for all track users. Um, we are integrated with them and it's fairly new. So just wanted to let everybody know that. And my info is in the chat. So if you have any questions and you want to get connected with Superhog, feel free to email me and I will connect you, connect you to the right person with the, the offer. And by the way, that was not pre-planned. I didn't know she was doing no, that. No, it wasn't. I was it came in on super Friday. hot because I love the guys. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, awesome, awesome. So next, let's see. We have Maddie Pauls, and he's going to be talk about talking about remarketing ads and emails. Go ahead, Maddie. Sure. So uh, we know that the channels are great ways to sell last-minute availability, but we saw through that poll that. Uh, at least 35% of you are also selling through your uh, direct marketing websites, um, which is a great, great way to get inventory out as well. Well, people that are searching for you, whether they're booking six days or six months out, are probably doing somewhat similar searches. So the best way to get found last minute is to have a great digital footprint. Uh, through marketing, through paid search, SEO, retargeting the clients, you're going to stay in front of them. Um, we know that even the best in class websites book at, at 1% or less. So that means 99 people out of 100 are coming to your website and they're leaving without booking. Well, we deploy tools to, to nurture clients throughout their journey. Um, our client here on the right, I don't know if you can read that letter, but this is a wonderful email they sent through conversion optimization. Uh, conversion optimization is a tool that grabs up to 10% of travelers' emails and automatically retargets them um, as they're going through the booking process. They've done an amazing job here by A, educating their family-owned business, book direct, save 15%, but I love what they do in the PS here. They say, make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. That's where we sell our last-minute inventory. Um, I've also seen property managers selling last-minute inventory on channels like LinkedIn. Uh, if your clients are there following you there, that's a, that's a great way to do it too. And Wednesday. And Wednesday as well. <laughs> Yeah. And then so once you actually have a solid digital foundation, when you have gaps to fill, you can go ahead and do targeted emails to past guests. Um, one of our clients in Texas is, is doing a special right now trying to push people to stay midweek. Uh, we know there's a huge number of people that are still uh, digital nomads and traveling during the week, whether it's for a few days or for, for a month, and they're, um, they're targeting them through, through these types of emails. They're also using promo codes. Uh, promo codes is a wonderful way to, to reach out to past guests and apply discounts to, to them traveling with you. Great, thanks, Maddie. So we know travelers are still booking vacation rentals, albeit at different pace, throughout different channels, and with different behavior than we've seen in the past. 
Managers have a variety of tools at their finger, fingertips that can help them optimize their strategy across online channels to fill their 2022 calendars. But in order to do that, managers also need to make it really easy for guests to find and book what they need to meet their expectations for a frictionless experience. There are a number of features or functions available to managers that can help make their, those experiences easier, both on the back end for your staff, as well on the front end for your guests. Whether that's consistent listing management, automated communications, or risk-free payment options, what are some ways managers can help provide this seamless experience for their guests? Jim, let's start with you. Can you talk us through some practice, best practices for listing management that can help increase conversion rates? You bet, Shelley. And again, something I'm pretty passionate about. Uh, we, we have the advantage of the channel manager perspective, but we work with, you know, 100 plus channels. We see what people do and there are things which are common throughout every, every platform, everything that you can possibly do. When you start at that funnel, kind of the aspirational side, I'm excited. I want to go try this place. I started doing research. Great. I'm doing research. Now I've stopped and I'm going into the shopping mode. And this is where what you can do starts to tie into it. Because I'm shopping, I might still be on Google. I might be diving into websites at this point. And the first thing that you're really going to drive is your content. And there's this journey that everybody goes through. And it's well-documented, aspirational. I start to shop. I start to look. Now I'm, I'm on the website. Um, what is it that's going to get that person to look at your page? And this is where the OTAs really drive towards. Um, and if you think about it, when you're on verbal Airbnb, booking, or wherever it is, what are the things that catch your eyes and cause you to dive into? And it's going to be a little different for each customer. Um, and I'll say headline. Okay, that does make a difference on the one hand. On the other hand, not as much as photos. But we see thousands of people with headlines that are 2DB-4A Jones. What the hell? Right? <laughs> That's going to be sexy. It's going to make me want to click on that. Uh, no, you know, have something beautiful. It's two bedroom, you know, beautiful ocean view property. Then it really drives into the photos. And I would say today with all the major changers channels, what drives the most is your photo quality and what is the content of that photo? Uh, pretty much most of your, you know, channels out there are going to say, um, you know, have a resolution of 1280 by, was it, 960 or whatever, and they say that's a high-res photo, that's the minimum, uh, great. You know, we have internal tools that measure everything, and I'd say 60, 70% of channel uh, property managers are there. Uh, but we also now have some which are going for a larger photo. So if you look at Expedia, for instance, if you don't have a minimum of a 2048 by 1535, you're considered a low res photo and you get no more than a 9% on your photo score. So up those photos, up the quality. And then think about, you know, that hero image, what's going to stop somebody to make them take a look. Um, strangely enough, I put two ugly photos down in the bottom last minute. Uh -huh. These two photos helped close me on a three month rental. I said I was a digital nomad. Guess what? Two desks, solid. My wife and I both work remotely. I don't have to go down to Costco or wherever and buy two desks and two chairs for the time we're there. That, that spoke to me. Uh, so anyways, a little bit of context is fine. Don't put your kids in or things like that. Uh, the rest of it kind of going on down, you can see some of it there. You know, room layout. This is, this is huge. And I know some PMSs don't support it. Track does. I'm very excited about that. Um, you may say, okay, it's got two kings, three queens, whatever, but being able to specify and show that bedroom one, king with end suite bathroom, bedroom two, king, in suite bathroom. Guess what? Three couples have got two thirds of it nailed. You know, then it goes into your other bedrooms. Make sure you're doing that. Uh, from there, you kind of go into some, some different areas, uh, reviews, massive. And again, this is the journey the person looks at. Then they go to look at how good is this place? Reviews, not reviews. Uh, what about this? Is the person a super host? Are they, you know, really know what they're doing, um, et cetera. So that, that's enough on that part. Now you go into the price and the fees. Pricing is going to be driven by you. A lot of you are using beyond pricing or some of the automated tools out there. Great. We look at the source of truth and what you're doing in that neighbor, in that, in that marketplace. But then you're going to get into some of the things on what's next. I, I've 
cross the price barrier. I'm willing to look at your property. What's the next thing I'm looking at? What are you going to do cancellation wise? If I click book now and give my credit card, have I just locked in? And if I can't travel, lost $15,000, whatever the price is. So there's a tremendous amount of research around uh, public perception and what will book well, what won't book well. So if you can kind of read a little bit there, you know, from a, a relaxed or fairly easy, you can cancel up to, you know, 14 days before, before a 15% higher conversion rate than when you start to make it a little bit tougher to cancel. Uh, you take the next step, you know, relax or moderate up to a strict. And, you know, I can give you definitions afterwards of what we use for this. It's, it's basically verbo. 24% um, higher conversion rate, um, you know, once you, once you look at that difference. Now, if you go from a non-refundable compared to a relaxed, your relaxed sees a 59% higher page conversion than those who are just saying, hey, you booked it. It's completely non-refundable now. Um, you want people to book, you want them to be sticky, you want to start to communicate with them. And so if you can at least get them to book, you're, you know, you know you're 90% of the way there, you're a huge chunk of it. So really, really look at what those rules are. Again, using an example of a very large customer of ours, uh, they had a non-refundable on booking.com, uh, book it, you own it, period. They dropped it down to a um, free cancellation up to 30 days. After that, it was a 50% cancellation penalty. And again, we saw bookings go up immediately. So think about what you can do there. It's incredibly important. Final thing, and then I'll uh, kind of get off this slide, top amenities and characteristics. Um, you know, the expression, uh, more is less. This is not the case. More is more when it comes to this. Um, looking at the four largest OTAs in the U.S., number one search was pool right now. It's summertime, beach destinations, warm destinations. That's the number one search thing that people were filtering on. Next, lodging type. Do I want a hotel, a, you know, a condo or whatever? Location, waterfront, beach, you know, whatever it may be. Hot tub, that one surprised me. And I wasn't gonna list it, but it was on three of the four OTAs, so they got it here, right? High-speed internet and Wi-Fi, it's ranked number five. It used to be in the top two. At this point, having good Wi-Fi, high-speed is just table stakes. You need to have it, it's assumed that you're gonna have it. Um, Airbnb, for instance, now has a tool that you can test the speeds and actually publish it. It's part of what their, their platform does. Um, I won't look at a place unless they're at least 100, 100 meg down. And I ask for screenshots and videos when I'm going because I'm a digital nomad. That's critical for me. So look at that. And then pets. Alex mentioned that. Um, you know, my dog travels. Um, I had him on my lap earlier. I did get rid of him just in case somebody came and started barking. Uh, but pets, big kitchen, those type of things. So look at that. Um, Track has a great number of characteristics and amenities. Um, nothing against them. We have a bunch more because we're serving a very broad audience. So we recommend when somebody onboards to us, we suck all that content over. And at that point, go through what we have checkbox additional so that more is more. And then uh, we'll send you on your, your way to a channel and hopefully drive a lot of bookings for you. Great. Thanks, Jim. Okay, Alex, let's take it away. Right. Jim, you have the most fascinating time. nuggets. It's just great. I, just, <laughs> I always, I'm, I'm just, I'm enthralled by all your slides and you're very expressive. I don't know what you're talking about. So let's talk easy use. So um, Shelly had mentioned before the kind of frictionless experience that is now uh, ubiquitous, right? I mean, we could thank Uber for, for that, right? And now that's just how it is. Um, everything at your fingertips and this is now expected. So, um, Going to talk about a couple of things that we've done at Wimstay. So the first two you see on the left there, proprietary tools, Split It and Trip Chat. These are uh, these are things that we that our engineering team have created and patented. I'm actually going to get to that in a couple of slides, so I'm not going to talk too much on on Split It and Trip Chat because I'm going to talk about it in a couple of minutes. Um, but just see those there. The second is a mobile app, right? Uh, both on iOS and Android. So you think that's sort of again? You kind of just assume everyone's got that. It's you, you'd actually be surprised. 53% um, of all of our bookings are on, uh, are on mobile app. So, uh, so that's a big number, right? Now, mm -hmm. some integrations that we've created, and a lot of this speaks to some of the things that Jim just talked about. The first is Affirm. So Affirm allows travelers to book now and then to space out the payment for an extended period of time. Um, the property manager, you guys will always get your payment, full payment um, upfront. And then the other one is Refund Protect. 
So we understand this 100%, right? So um, we, we are a last minute site and all sales are final. So as a property manager, because we're selling last minute, right? All sales are final, but we do understand that flexibility is, is, is mandatory, is necessary now. So, um, so what we have done is offered something called Refund Protect. The, uh, the traveler will pay a very small amount uh, and then um, they will have an option obviously to, to, to get paid out on that if, if they decide to refund. But again, you get the full payment. Now let's talk risk management options and let's actually talk about it on both sides. So I think that there is for, for better or worse, I do believe that the last minute traveler might have a bit of a reputation. I'm not 100% sure, but yes, let's assume that. We're a last minute site. We understand 100% that there appears to be, whether or not there is, there is a risk around a last minute traveler. So we've done a couple of things here in order to mitigate that. The first I'll say is Stripe. So we use our payment processor Stripe. Um, what they do is they have a, a risk rating from zero to 100, zero being very good, 100 being no. So uh, we, what we do at, uh, at Wimstay is very specifically zero to 25. That's what we do for our risk management side. So anything above 25, we're probably just not going to take it. Um, so, uh, and if we do, then, you know, we'll, we'll connect with the property manager to make sure, but we need to make sure that this is a good traveler. And then we get front and back licenses as well. So, um, so that's really important to us. And on top of that, we've got a, what we call a travel advocacy team that, uh, that has a conversation with all of them. And then if you don't mind going back, Shelly, there's oh, one sorry. more. Here. That's okay. Um, Stripe. Oh, and then the refund protect. Right. So I already talked about the refund protect, but that just mitigates risk for the, for the traveler side. Um, which I think is really important. I will say this, 42%, and I, and I might have mentioned, I should have mentioned this before, actually, 42% of all travelers say that the number one most important for them thing for them is that they don't lose money, right? So uh, we got to make sure on that. But again, you guys get paid regardless. And 51% of all Wimstay travelers are using Refund Protect. So, uh, okay, Shelly, go ahead. That's great. So let's talk group travel. Um, so this is, I told you I'd get back to that, those two sort of proprietary tech that, we, that we've created over here. Um, so we've built these out, right? These are patented to serve what we are seeing as a growing and a massive segment. And I'm gonna get to my theme too uh, in a second on this. Group travel, okay? So um, another differentiator for our industry. Hotels will never be able to accommodate this like we can. And this is not only becoming a trend, this is becoming, this is massive right now. So TripChat, it allows travelers to chat with friends and family on the app itself, right? So you could share properties, you can react to messages, you can collaborate on a group trip without ever leaving the app. What this does is it keeps them focused on the trip itself. So sometimes, if you're on a, if you're doing the text thing and you can kind of drift off, we are finding we're seeing a high conversion rate off of, of off of trip chat because people are kind of staying focused, staying in the app, getting ready to buy. Got to keep people right in that buying position always. So uh, we found trip chat has been really amazing for that. And then the second is split pay. It just allows travelers to split the total payment between multiple individuals. So uh, it's not a situation where one person is going to pay for the whole thing and then have to hope that you get the Venmo or the Zelle or whatever it is, right? It also lessens sticker shock quite a bit. Um, so this is also big, right? So a trip that from 20 people is going to be $20,000, $15,000. Please don't make me do the math, right? But it's going to look a heck of a lot simpler when you're, when you're looking at something that's four or $500, something like that. So uh, this has been massive. In a recent survey, again, this is focus right. I, I lean a lot on focus right because I think they're great. 68% of millennials said that they wanted a service that would let them split the cost of travel with others in a group booking. 68%. And then Amadeus pegged what is called the friendcation, right, as one of the two biggest trends of 2022. And they spotted a, this is huge, six-fold increase in bookings of more than 20 people. So, wow. um, and again, I, I don't mean to kind of keep harping on this, but this is a short-term rental. This is vacation rental specific, right? We are the only ones that can capture these travelers. So we are in, I, I can't emphasize it enough, in such a great spot for what's coming down the pike in terms of travelers. Great. Thanks, Alex. You are welcome, Shelley. On to you, Maddie P. What do you got? Yes. Yeah, so in addition to all these wonderful features that Alex and Jim have talked about, why do people book with OTAs? They make it easy. It's a seamless user experience. The websites are easy to navigate. Um, several clicks to book as opposed to, to multiple. You can do that with your website too. 
Um, we've taken our clients from an average of six or seven clicks down to three clicks or less. It helps to uh, uh, mitigate abandonment throughout the process. And then when people do, we have great tools to follow up. So just like Amazon follows up with you when you leave a pair of socks in your cart, we can do the same exact thing for vacation rentals. Um, by collecting their email and their phone number on this first slide, we can retarget them. Um, and what happens with a lot of these folks? Well, they come to your site, um, you know, and think about it. When was the last time you evaluated your site? Is it clunky? Does it go to a subdomain? So if any of that happens, they're going to bounce and book with Alex and Jim. Good, good for Alex and Jim, less, less good for you as a property manager. But what you can do is really target them directly through these campaigns. And we've seen upwards of uh, almost 20% of abandoned carts being recaptured just from putting in automated techniques. We set these up in the beginning and then it's essentially set it and forget it. And it just keeps nurturing, nurturing guests as they are, they're going throughout their journey. And going back to one of Jim's slide, I saw that even though people are booking last minute, there's still an average pace of 58 days. So almost two months that people are doing, doing shopping for these trips. So stay in front of them in a number of ways, including cart abandonment. Great. Great. One more poll and then um, we'll wrap up. So which strategy discussed today do you think you're most likely to implement in your business to help drive last minute bookings? Refresh your OTA listings and distribute to new OTAs, adjust booking rules and policies, implement remarking, remarketing and automate communications with website visitors or you just showed up for the trend data. And one question, I will let you guys think about it and answer, but one question that came through and I believe it was around booking rules, average length of stay, um, what is Wednesday, if not just a day in the week? I'm wondering if that was, uh, if someone heard the word Wednesday and thought it was Wednesday. I know that because anytime I call ah, okay. Alex yeah, from yeah, Wednesday, what's true. Wednesday? No. Nope. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I think that that's probably what it was. I, I was trying to equate it to something because I'm like, well, the weekends are shoulder periods. Wednesday's definitely- I could be wrong. Week. I could be wrong. Oh. But I don't know. Okay. All right. And then we will take that poll, wrap that up. And we will also open it up to questions. So if you have any other questions, feel free to drop them in the chat now so we can discuss. And thank you so much, Matt, Alex, and Jim and our behind the scenes help with the polls and whatnot for a great discussion. And thank you to everyone who joined us today. You'll be receiving a follow-up email, including the recording of today's website. So feel free to share with anyone on your team who wasn't able to join today in the meantime. If any of you have any questions or would like to learn more about what you've seen in today's webinar, please feel free to reach out directly today to any of the panelists today or send me an email. Again, it is in the chat. And I'm just gonna look really quick and see if there's any questions that came up. No, no, no. All right, well, everyone have a great rest of the week and thank you so much for joining us. Thanks guys. Shelly, thanks everybody for putting thanks, this Thanks everyone. Great seeing you guys. Bye, thanks.